A model steamboat named Edith, this is part 25. And this one's called How to Make the Rudder Control Arm. The rudder control arm speaks for itself, it's an arm that controls the position of the rudder. I'm going to make a completely different system, so the entire assembly will look a lot neater. Originally, I presumed that this shaft was 3 sixteenths of an inch in diameter, but it's not. It's 4.8 millimetres. I bought these digital calipers recently, and they came from the centre aisle of a local supermarket, and they're quite good, very well made. I'm so used to using micrometers, I could never really get my head round how thin the jaws are on these calipers, and if you don't hold them at 90 degrees to the work, you may get a false reading. I have two choices with this control arm, the first one being to fabricate it, and the second one, which I'm going to use, cut it out of a solid block of brass. The finished size of this control arm will be exactly the same size as the arm that's fitted to the servo, and the piece of brass is exactly one and a half inches in diameter. And without further ado, it's straight into the machining. I'm going to turn down the front part of this piece of brass bar down to about 5 eighths of an inch in diameter. The finished diameter will be half an inch. If you watch the video to the end, you will see why initially I turned it to 5 eighths of an inch in diameter. Machining this part from the solid is a bit of a waste of brass really. Most of it goes into the chip tray, but it's a good exercise for a beginner. And that's what these videos are always all about helping the beginner to get good results easily and quickly. Generally, I do not use complex techniques because it's really not necessary for making model boats and model steam engines and other models that require metal parts. When you're building a model engine, you do need to take great care to make sure that the parts fit together accurately and are not too tight or too slack. I've had a few girlfriends like that, but that was in the past and now I spend a lot of time making models. So in this clip you can see that the diameter of the metal, slowly but surely, is getting less and less. But take your time. Because as I've just shown, if you start to rush and take great big bites out of the brass very quickly, the piece could jump out of the chuck. The job would be ruined, and if it was a piece of steel that I was turning, it would have probably damaged the tool as well. I don't know why it should be, but bringing the tool backwards like this is a really satisfying experience. I definitely think I need to get out more, or probably just take more tablets. Just for once, because a few viewers have requested it, I've left the operation running in real time. The clip is not speeded up in the editor, this is the speed at which I cut the metal. But I will be speeding the clip up shortly, because I really am in danger of slipping into a coma. And this is the final cut, which is ironic as I'm editing in a program called Final Cut Pro. And what I need to do now is take a facing cut across the front of the work, just to clean up the surface. And finally it's done. So it's now time to drill a hole in the center. First of all with a center drill because I want this to be accurate. And because the center drill is such a short stubby thing, it doesn't wander about. It makes an accurate hole in the center of the work. I always use imperial measurements and imperial tools. For a couple of reasons, I was taught in imperial at school. And also I have plenty of imperial tooling that I've collected over the years because I is well old in it. But I recently bought a small metric drill bit set. So once I drilled the hole using a 4.8mm drill bit, the rudder shaft was an almost perfect fit in the hole. When it came to parting off the piece of brass, it was too big for my small parting tool that I use in the Boxford lathe, so I just cut off the last bit using a hacksaw. You can do this under power in the lathe using a hacksaw, but I prefer not to. In this clip, I'm reversing the part in the chuck. What I'm about to do is machine the other side, because this disc of brass is far too thick for the job I need it to do. And now, with the video speeded up, I can get on with the job at a much higher speed. This brass disc needs to be reduced in thickness so that a clevis fits on it. You will notice that I'm still leaving a boss in the centre. Apart from it looking OK, you will see why very shortly. Once I machined the disc to the thickness of the inside area of a radio control clevis, I marked out the position where I need to cut off the excess metal. As I cut the brass disc to shape, the bandsaw blade is marking the centre boss. But that's not a problem, that's why I left it slightly oversized. Once I've finished cutting and cleaning up the brass, I will put it back in the chuck and machine both sides. So the centre bosses at each side of the arms will be perfect. And that's also why I machined a register on the top of the component, so I could reverse it in the chuck to machine the boss to the same diameter at the other side. Apart from a bit more polishing, the part is completed. 
Here you see the principle. This is a standard metal radio control clevis and it fits the hole perfectly. And now over to the drilling machine. With the part securely clamped in the machine vise, I'm using a centre drill to drill the hole for the grub screw. Then I change the centre drill for a twist drill, which is tapping size for 6BA. I then threaded the hole and fitted a pinch bolt. This is a before and after shot. On the right hand side is the original control arm. In the centre is the part that I've just made and on the left of the picture is just what's left of the brass block after I machined this part. And that's it for this episode. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.